Hey guys, welcome back to the Past Money Plan. Today we're going to be going over the short-term rental market in Florida and how it has started to cool off. So we're going to go over some numbers, look over a chart. So Kirby, you got chart. You need a you need no. screen. Yeah, share screen, share screen. But let me get my dialogue in first and put my thesis behind it. All right. So I mean, for the people that don't know. And this, I'm mainly directing this towards Floridians, but this could be going across the nation. In 2000, during COVID and things and what have you, Airbnb took off like a rocket ship. It took off like a rocket ship so much that people, instead of like destinations, like vacation destinations, like, you know, Clearwater, Siesta Key, People start getting the grand idea of, hey, why don't we start buying homes in just neighborhoods, just regular, ordinary neighborhoods, and this may be a 10, 20 minute drive to the beach and start Airbnb in local neighborhoods where it's mostly homeowners or it's long term renters, but mostly homeowners, you know, subdivisions and things like that. And my thesis is, and then I'll put up the data to show you. And, you know, this data is showing about destination cities, you know, Destin and the beach areas. But my thesis is with the increase, and we talked about increasing escrow prices, increasing insurance, increases uh, in property tax and things like that in Florida. And then, of course, some, some local municipalities are clamping down on uh, short-term rentals. It's my belief and my thesis that the short-term rental market in Florida, not all, you know, you got Miami that might still be doing decent, but for the most part, most of the Airbnbs in Florida are cash flow negative and the short-term renters in a lot of areas of Florida are hurting bad. All right, so Alex, let me see. Let me hit that share button for me so I can share this screen. You're good. All right, so I'm going to share it. Let me know when you can see it. Yep. Can you see it? Yep. All right, so here, this is a this is a trend line of uh, adjusted paid occupancy percentages, summer pacing. So 2019, you know, Airbnb was somewhere in a 40% range. And then we go up. We go up 2020, like I said, COVID area. COVID area was high, and then now it's down 30%. So this is below 2019 occupancy rate. And then you can start going over the cap sand bliss, same thing. Uh, 2007, 2019, pre-COVID, it was like 70%, now it's 64%. You see right here, it's at 42%, now it's back down to 42%. Destin, Destin is Destin. Destin's still doing this thing. Um... Then you got you got Miramar down. You got uh Okaloosa Island is still about on par. Then you got uh Panama, Pensacola, up a little bit. And then you got down in some some areas. But the thing I want to point out is during this rise here, uh during this rise here, this is when most of the people got the Airbnb idea in 2020. So they was basing on they will pay exorbitant amount of prices. They will pay exorbitant higher price than listing rates. That's why besides the big migration coming down here from, you know, New York, New Jersey, and Northeast region of the United States. They was uh, the other big calls for Florida's housing market to go is because people was being there for prices and changing the Airbnbs. Now, when occupancy rate, so people was buying properties based on the occupancy rate of you know, 80, 90 percent that the property will cash flow, especially when, you know, you had the YouTubers and social media content creators telling everybody, you know, you should buy homes and neighborhoods and Airbnb arbitrage and all things like that. When people was buying houses, especially 2021, 2022, they were buying Airbnbs at an elevated price from, you know, 2020. And then the occupancy rate had to be about 80, 90 percent for the property to cash flow. And I remember having a conversation with a gentleman who reached out to me and asked me, should he buy this property over actually here in the Panama Beach area? And then he said, yeah, if I could get 
90% occupancy, it'll cash flow for me. And then, so I told him to go to Airbnb uh, DNA to see what the occupancy rate was before COVID. And he said the occupancy rate was around 45% for the area. And then I said, so when once all this died down and inflation takes over, and then of course the Fed will raise the rates and we've seen that happen. And then things start normalizing. People won't have all the extra money. The occupancy rate will go back to pre-COVID era. So if he buys this property now and need 90% occupancy, he won't receive 90% occupancy. He's The trend line is, will revert back. And as we see in this chart here, we're seeing it revert back. You know, 72% uh, to 75%. 70% to 64%. Destin's still doing good. Miramar, 81%, 77%. Uh, a Akaloosa, that's what I'm saying, Island, 79%, 79%. So this brought everybody in, and it's just like it is in the stock market. When everything's high, people want to jump in on it. Everybody got a scheme, oh, well, this is what I'm going to do, and then it reverts back to the mean. A lot of people are screwed. And then we can go Panama Beach, 69%, 71%. Uh, Pensacola Beach, 77 82%. Uh, and then so on and so forth. And then you can see it from here, from 2021 20, to 2022, there's been a drastic drop in occupancy while the market adjusted to a release of pent-up demand. And this summer is pacing behind last year as well. 30A, this is Cap, Cap San uh, Blazes and Miramar Beach are all expecting 9% decreases from last year, the largest in the the largest of the markets above. That's this chart here that we're showing. All right, let me stop sharing. So my thesis, this is what I just showed you was in the actual vacation destination. So if the vacation destinations actually on the beach are having a decline, a decline was reverting back to the mean of pre-COVID, what's going on in these neighborhoods? These neighborhoods, I get it. People people like, uh, you know, Airbnb was an alternative especially during COVID when you just wanted your family in one location and you didn't want to be around a lot of people in hotels. But now Airbnb prices, because people bought these absorbent amount, these absorbent prices for these properties, and then now you have all these other payments coming in, property taxes and insurance, then now the host, especially if they bought in the, you know, the COVID era, these properties at these high rates, now the escrow payments are going to go higher. They're going to have to increase the rate. Soon, the, the rates that they're going to have to charge will be higher than going back to a hotel. So if we haven't we haven't a return back to the mean of 2019 before COVID on the Airbnb key statistics, it's a lot of people that's going to be stuck in that, stuck from the 2020 to 2022 era when they bought properties at these high rates. And I think that will cause a, a damper on demand, people will be cash flow negative. They will not have the ability to rent these properties out long term and receive the rents that's needed to, you know, cover the properties, just the mortgage payment. So they have to go Airbnb, but the Airbnb, the demand has dropped drastically. So what do they do? And I think this trend will continue, especially with the Fed raising rates, the student loan uh, repayment coming back. There's going to be less money in people's pockets. And I'm not talking about the actual vacation destinations. Whatever's going on there, that's on there. But most people that's written the neighborhoods that's away from the destinations are usually not the people that have the money that can survive the, you know, survive this Fed increase. It's not the people sitting there with hundreds of hundreds of thousands of dollars of student loans. The people that's at these destinations, these are A1 buyers who have a lot of money. These people that's, you know, going in the neighborhood and say, oh, well, it's only 20 minutes away. We'll just drive to the beach from here. These are the people that's stacked with com consumer debt, stacked with commercial, I mean, all other kind of debts, car payments, student loan debts, and things like that. So the numbers dropping at the vacation destinations, these neighborhoods are going to be dropping also. And all these people that jumped in these Airbnbs, especially at these high prices, they're going to be stuck. They're going to be stuck. And you know the you know the insurance crisis here in Florida, the insurance prices are going to double, triple. And what do they do? So what do you think about that? I know I've talked for a long time now. It's all good. Yeah. Um, 
we've talked about this before the short-term rental market in well not just florida anywhere and it's interesting because during that time i heard a lot of people talking about renting out airbnb and buying properties just for short-term short-term rentals like they they had the idea like long-term rentals is a headache but short-term rentals is a way better way to go and in reality uh, it's more of a headache um you have to the turnaround on that is you know just about every other day so and then not just that but you have to be more strategic with buying you know like we saw with this chart all these areas are like tourist areas they're not regular areas you don't see anyone saying hey i'm gonna go to a short-term rental market in you know ocala or i'm gonna go rent an airbnb in lake city i'm gonna rent an airbnb in perry florida like you don't you don't see these areas you're looking at the beach areas and so if you buy short-term rentals you have to be strategic with that and you have to get the good spots like you said the people that can afford renting right there on the beach they're those are the good buyers those are the people with money the people that have to drive to those distances if you have a rent if you have an airbnb in in an area like that you know pulled away from the actual resort areas or the tourist areas, those are probably going to be the the Airbnbs that get affected by this. The ones right there on the beach or right in the middle of where everything's going, they're still going to see attention. Right, and and you know I, I visit you know the Siesta Key area a lot, the Anna Maria Island, and they've been you doing short term rentals before Airbnb came out. You know, this is, you know, they've been doing this since probably since Florida's existence. So they, that model has been tried and true in those destinations, you know, for years, you know, years on end before Airbnb was ever even out, short-term rentals was a thing there. And that model has been working because those areas flourish. The Sarasota, I mean, not the Sarasota, but the Siesta Key, the Clearwater Beach, the, um, the Anna Marie Island sectors. I was actually there yesterday. Um, but you do see, and the other aspect of this is the HOAs are starting to get peed off about these short-term renters. Because for, for people that don't know, renters don't bring up the value. And then now you're thinking, like you said, short-term renters is worse than long-term renters because you never know what they're going to do. Um, matter of fact, I'll put this out there. I had a neighbor in my neighborhood. He wanted to, you know, start getting into the Airbnb thing. He had tenants in there. They supposed to have been there for a week. They was there for three days, got into a fight, busted out windows, tore up the property, and he just bought that property. So now he got to put a pause on the Airbnb uh, fiasco or Airbnb thing that he wanted to do. Because now he got to repair the property. This is the first one. And this is in a regular neighborhood. I'm not close to, well, Alex, you know where I stay. You know, me, I'm 45 minutes from the beach. In the hood. <laughs> yeah, I call, I call it the hood. You know, I'm 45 <laughs> minutes from the beach. I'm, I, there's only thing, only thing close to me is Top Golf and David Busters and I Fly. I mean, tourist attraction wise, but you can be anywhere. Right. That right. is the problem. And a lot of a lot more people are going to run into this because I'm not saying that people that has Airbnbs and neighborhoods are getting the worst of the worst renters. I'm not saying that. But they have a bit. The people that, you know, got these Airbnbs in the neighborhood. And I've actually seen uh, a, a guy in Sarasota who bought bought a whole bunch of uh, duplexes and it was Airbnb in them out and he paid an exorbitant amount of price. Now he's just trying to exit them for the price that he paid for them. Uh, but the thing is, is it's hard to get out of it because they won't cash, they won't cash flow for a long term rental. Only person he can sell them to is somebody he probably convinced that, oh, you can Airbnb them and it's still good. But the truth of the matter is, is the ideal, the concept is good. But when you're doing Airbnbs, you need to be in a one location. You know, if you're out there in California, you know, Big Bear, you want to be near the beach, you want to be you know, walking distance to the beach. I ain't saying you got to be sitting right there on the coastline, 
but you better be walking distance to the beach. And I ain't talking about my walking distance. My walking distance is, hey, two miles out, you can walk it. I mean, tourist walking distance, you know, a block, maybe two or three blocks away from the beach. Those are those are A1 destinations. It got to be a tourist attraction that's there. I mean, like in Disney and stuff like that. It has to be a moat that's around there that make people want to keep coming. And I think that we're on pace here. And, it's, and I'm mainly talking about the people that's in Airbnbs in the neighborhoods because there's a lot more of them than that's in these tourist areas. I think there's going to be opportunity there where people are going to have to come off the price. Actually, when I left uh, Adam Marie Island, I started looking in those regions that's close to the beach, and I've seen people, prices are dramatically lower than what they were before. Before, I mean, I saw Airbnb in the Adam Marie Island, right off the island, they was going for you know, seven, eight hundred thousand because you could Airbnb them. Now I just seen one come on a, come on the market for like three and some change, four. And this is a two and two, but that's how much it was going for down there when Airbnb craze was going crazy because now we have a different environment. So I do believe it's going to be opportunity there, but I do believe it's going to be a lot of people hurting that thought that they can take advantage of the Airbnb market because the long-term rental rate and the Airbnb rate is drastically separating from themselves. And um, even people buying long-terms in Florida right now can't get cash flow properties, uh, much less trying to convert an Airbnb to a cash flow property. Now, if you bought your property back, you know, 2000, you know, 16, 17, and you got a low rate, you know, low price you paid for and and you can make it happen, you know, Airbnb or long-term rental, great. But most of the people that I'm focused on is the people that ran into the craze, you know, post-COVID, you know, when COVID started and it ran to the craze and paid up on these properties, those people are going to be hurting, especially with the occupancy reverting back to the mean. And I expect it to go down more, especially when student loans start in October, we're getting out of the vacation season, people are going back to school and people are just going to have less money all in all to actually vacation and uh, have discretionary funds to do things like that. With all that being said, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button, leave a comment down below, share this video, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.